This is my third installment on square ebony pegs. In this video, I will cover punching the square hole and installation of the peg. Most of the time, I use these uh, Lee Valley square punches. Full disclosure here, uh, I turned this idea into Lee Valley and uh, I get royalties off these. I make money off of them. Uh, they consist of two pieces, two parts. This part is hardened steel. It's better for pounding into wood. It um, cuts better. This part here is better for pounding on. So uh, it's softer steel. That's why the two pieces. Now, uh, there are other methods to do uh, square holes. Uh, you can take the hollow chisel from a hollow chisel mortiser and do the same thing. I like this a little better. I think it feels better in my hand. Uh, but beware, if you do that with a hollow chisel from a hollow chisel mortiser, you're going to mushroom over the top and it's going to be dedicated for that purpose from there on. Uh, it will not fit back up into the machine. Now, if you really have uh, your chisel sharp and you have the bit trued up so it doesn't uh, come outside the perimeter here and leave those little crescents, you can do this operation over at the hollow chisel mortiser. You just got to make sure everything's trued up and just right. The bit used with the uh, uh, punch is 364 under the given size. So this is a quarter inch punch, 1364 bit. Now this is a twist bit. You don't need to use a brad point here. This gets buried into the wood to the point where it captures the perimeter. There's no chance of tear out. So twist bit is just fine. So I set the bit about, oh, 5 16 3 8 proud of the uh, punch. Now, a problem you're going to encounter, though, is with the 3 16 and quarter inch punches, standard size bits aren't going to protrude. What I do is I buy aircraft length uh, bits and I cut them down to where I need them. Um, I've got a blank here, just a drill blank, and I'll show you how I cut them down. Let's head over to the um, grinder. So I've determined where this guy needs to be cut. I've got a mark here. Let's turn on the uh, grinder. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it right here on the edge until I have just a little bit of material left holding it together, then I'll snap it in two. Simple, easy to do. Today I'm just going to confine our discussion to the basic use of the square punch. There's alternate uses for the square punch. There's alternate ways to make the square holes. That's for a later video. Okay, to start with, draw a center line where you want to put the square hole. This is just an arbitrary one here for um, purposes of demonstration. So now we're going to take the punch and we're going to center it on those lines we've drawn and keep it square. Get down and look and see if you're centered. It's more important to stay square to the world than the exact center of those lines. If you're this way a 64th or that way a 64th, your eye is likely not to catch it. But if you're not square to the world, that will uh, catch your eye very quickly. So I'm pretty square and I'm pretty even. And now I'm just going to 
give it a whack. If you notice, I'm using a um, steel hammer. I'm not using a rubber mallet like uh, the instructions uh, uh, often say. Uh, I know why they say that. It's because you're going to mushroom over this top. The steel hammer will mushroom the top over. It doesn't affect the function. It may not look, at, look as nice, but the steel hammer gives you a lot better control than that rubber mallet. So now anyway, he's standing on his own, centered on those lines, I'm going to drill out. Okay, and now, and as I go down, I need to get down at eye level and see if this guy is 90 degrees to the work surface in both directions. Okay, we're good. Wiggle just a little bit as you go down. Not a lot. If you wiggle a lot, you're going to enlarge the hole. Wiggling just a little is going to allow you to pull it out easy once you've got it all the way down. I'm going to keep punching until I may be a light 64th down here before it starts, uh, light 16th rather, uh, before it starts to flare out right down here. So um, Now I'm not going to pull this guy out yet. If, uh, if you think about it, We've drilled down, and then we punched. When we punched down, we loosened all this crud out there, but it's still held in the bottom. When I, if I pull it out right now, I'll have to come back in with something and loosen that crud up. But if I go back in with a drill bit and just drill down, you'll feel it stop when you hit bottom. Um, that just loosens up that crud, and you don't have to go back later. Now we can pull it out. And we've got a nice crisp square hole. So now we're ready to install an ebony peg. Uh, normally, in the course of things, installing the ebony pegs is the very last thing I do before the finish goes on. I do all the sanding, do a check on you know, with my bright lights, all that stuff, and, 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 and um, the final sanding, and then the ebony pegs go in is the very last thing. We're doing this one out of order just as a demo. Okay, so over the years, I've played with a lot of different mallets, mostly uh, plastic-headed mallets. I started out with this guy, Stanley. Uh, he's kind of tried and true. He's not bad, good. This is one that I found at a uh, garage sale. Love it, but no brand on it. Don't know how to get another one. I kind of settled on the Thor. I really love Thor mallets. Uh, this guy's for, I use it for uh, kind of everyday use. When I need to get into a tight spot, I use this little guy, three quarter inch, and I believe this is an inch. They have removable heads, uh, which is kind of nice. I also like this guy. He uh, says Grace USA BH 40T. Uh, I'm told this is um, that gunsmiths use this, but I like the use of this. It feels good as well. Uh, but generally speaking, I use one of these two. Now I like to create a little, not ink well, but glue well and use a toothpick and line the upper perimeter of that hole. If you remember right from the video on making the ebony pegs, uh, it's only about a sixteenth or so of material on this peg that's going to make contact with that hole. So no need to put stuff in any further any deeper. Okay, and it's, then it's just a matter of tap, tap, tap easily, and there we are. It's very, very simple. Uh, one thing, one caution, uh, and that is resist that urge for one more little tap. 
uh, because then you've gone too far, and if you've gone too far, um, when the light hits it at the right angle, it really stands out. Um, then you have to pull that plug out. Uh, I will show you how to pull those plugs out uh, in an upcoming video.